Well, we'll see if uh, we can begin again. I apologize for that. I was not sure what was going to happen with that. Uh, it was actually a video I was using to get that song, but we'll see what happens next. Again, my apologies. Uh, hopefully the uh, internet police will not be knocking on my door soon. Anyway, our Old Testament reading tonight is Psalm 138, and here's a paraphrase. At the end of this day, we give you thanks, our God, our eyes turning towards your face, gazing upon you, offering our thanks for all you do for us, far more than those idols, people, things, desires that try to claim our souls. Whenever we call, you drop everything to come, love overflowing from your arms. Hope poured out in our lives, grace handed to us without question. If they were smart, the leaders in the world would stop patting themselves on the backs and would point to you, singing your goodness, your praise, your ways. But sadly, they don't, and it seems only the vulnerable have a clue as to what sort of God you are, loving in every moment, faithful to every promise. Even in these days, when we seem so overwhelmed by what we cannot see, yet which terrifies us beyond measure, you reach out through our neighbors, you comfort us in our long nights, you do not abandon us to our fears. We are your children, we are your people, we are your beloved, and you will not, you cannot, you refuse to leave us on our own. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then our Old Testament song for tonight is a song of David and comes from First Chronicles. Blessed are you, God of Israel, forever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. True wealth and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. <clears throat> and now we give you thanks, our God, our praise and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Then our New Testament reading comes from uh, the letter to the Hebrew Christians as well as to us. We're reading uh, verses 1 through 14 of the 12th chapter. This is, follows the great 11th chapter about faith. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children, for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have dis that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not even more willing? Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, 
but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. And then our New Testament song comes from uh, Luke's gospel. It's the Magnificat, the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for us, for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I would be true, for there are those who trust me. I Someone mentioned earlier about hearing the birds outside our windows here uh, chirping away, uh, which drives our cat bonkers. He's usually racing from room to room, uh, from window to window in our apartment, uh, trying to see them, trying to keep an eye on them. He sees it as his duty to protect us to make sure none of those birds try to break in and harm us or try to steal his food, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but it also reminded me about the fact that it's 9.30, quarter till 10, where you most of you folks live. 
I imagine it's dark there. The stars are out. Uh, you're getting ready for bed, and here we are still in the late part of the afternoon and getting ready for our evening meal. It's a marvelous reminder of all the ways that we have been able to make touch during these last two years especially and keep in touch with folks in parts of the world, in places of the world where there are different times, there's different things going on. We're beginning to enter into our summer and friends I have in Australia uh, are getting ready for winter. Uh, a friend of mine is getting ready to retire from a church in Scotland. Uh, one of my closest friends is retired, has retired today out in the middle part of the United States. Uh, another friend is going to retire in about four weeks. I'm not going to be able to attend any of their retirement worship services, but I can because I can pull them up on my phone. I can pull them up on my device, not necessarily at the time that it actually happens, but watch it later to be able to partake in their joy and in their moments. Uh, just like I can do with uh, going to some of the services of folks here in East Midlands. Uh, I can tune into worship in any part of the country, not just part of the country, but any part of the world. And hear voices, hear music, uh, hear prayers, hear God's witness in a multitude of ways that I couldn't do even five or ten years ago. It's a reminder of that great cloud of witnesses. Uh, I think when Hebrews was written it, it was kind of implying that these are the people who have gone before us and are sitting there cheering us on as we continue on with our journey, with our pilgrimage of faith. But our great cloud of witnesses is those people all around us, those people who continue to support us, care for us, encourage us, push us, nudge us, um, give us a swift kick once in a while when we need it to remind us of all those opportunities we have to continue to live lives of goodness, of kindness, of peace, of justice, to share hope, to share grace, to share love in this world in which those gifts often seem so lacking even after these two years of pandemic when there was so much more empathy and caring and compassion now it seems that part of our return to the way life used to be is unfortunately returning to a way of life that was cruel and unkind and uncaring. But this cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before us as well as those who are still around us, those who are in Australia and in Botswana in East Midlands, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in the Ukraine, uh, in South America, in the Pacific Islands, people who really are a part of our lives, even though we may never meet on this side of grace, but who continue to make up that community, that community of grace, that beloved community that God has promised to shape in our midst and continues to shape in our midst. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in a few moments of prayer. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in the eternal city with, of which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I offer up prayers of thanksgiving this day for those friends I mentioned, especially my friend Bob who retired today. Uh, 
as well as my friend Colin, who will be retiring in a few weeks in Scotland, and Nancy will be retiring a few weeks from now in Kentucky in the States. And for all you folks, for all the folks who throughout the world continue to be that cloud of witnesses for me, and I invite you in these moments to offer up your silent prayers of thanksgiving for all those who continue to grace your life and to love you and care for you. <clears throat> Blessed are you, sovereign God, reigning in glory. Cloud and deep darkness proclaim your holiness. Radiant light shows forth your truth. Jesus has entered the cloud of your presence. He has taken his seat at the right hand of majesty. Perfect sacrifice, he has put away sins. Merciful high priest, he pleads for our weakness. Always our brother, he prepares our place in heaven. Ruler of all, he establishes your reign. Dawning light for the righteous, hope of the sinners. Blessed are you, sovereign God, high over all. Amen. And now as evening falls, let us bring to God all the needs of our lives, our communities, our world. We continue to pray for all those communities in which we live, the communities of faith of which we are part of and which sustain us and nourish us and continue to allow us to pe be people of grace and hope of love and justice. We pray especially this night for uh, the United Reformed Church at all the at the national levels, for members of the churches together in Britain and Ireland, for the universal church, and for all those places and people represented by those who gather this night. We give you thanks for all those who continue to care for us. We pray for those who continue to face the challenge of COVID-19, which with the new variants and the increasing cases and hospitalizations obviously uh, is not about to let go of us or of our world. So we pray for the key workers, the NHS staff, care home staff, teachers, parents, students, uh, people who care for the vulnerable, for the forgotten, for the lonely. Uh, we pray for those who continue to try to get out more vaccines and boosters, who try to develop new medications and new treatments. We pray for those who need to be able to get the tests that they want to be able to have for those communities and those nations who need vaccines so much. We pray for those who are suffering from the effects of long COVID as well. We pray alongside those who have suffered physically, all those whose mental health has been badly affected by the privations, the changes, the challenges of the last two years. We pray for those who have those heavy, heavy burdens, those silent burdens that they carry and cannot share with anyone else, and pray that they might be able to find people who continue to love and care for them. We pray for all those who are in the midst of complicated family relationships, for honesty, transparency, open dialogue, for healing. So many people in so many places struggle with the dramatic rise in cost of the essentials of life and pray for their relief and their hope. We pray for the people in Ukraine, for the people in the Yemen, for the Sudan, uh, for all the other places throughout the world in which there was war and death, destruction, uh, creation of more and more refugees, more and more people being injured and killed and fighting for those who are caught up in the tragedies of losing their communities. We pray for the victims in Buffalo, New York, of the mass shooting that took place yesterday. And we pray for healing and peace and reconciliation. We continue to pray with Liz for her 12-year-old great nephew, Ryan, and for her daughter, Emma. We pray for, we see you for her brother-in-law, Mike, still dealing with his spinal pain with Prince for Cheryl, for their healing, as well as for their nation. We pray with Andy for Mike, uh, his dad. We give thanks for Liz and Ruth as they continue to care for Mike. We pray with Judith for her niece, Catherine. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for Jeffrey's continued healing, and we pray 
with Jenny for her husband Oldham. We pray for all those who uh, continue to grieve the death of loved ones, uh, especially those who continue to die from the effects of COVID. We pray for for the family and friends of the Reverend Mario Motibi in Botswana Synod. We pray for the Reverend Jeff Townsend and the family on the death of Ann Townsend. Uh, and in the silence of these moments, oh God, we would lift up those prayers that we carry in our hearts. <clears throat> God of all mercy, hear our evening prayer. Bring us safely through the night that we may give you praise with the coming of the dawn. We ask this through Christ, the Word made flesh, who taught us to pray together as we use our own words, language, and format. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your came to come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Good night, friends. <laughs>